the CD1 and CD2 races were something the entire nation was watching leading up to the elections. In CD1, the focus was largely on the possibility of the first Native American woman being elected to Congress. As it turned out, Deb Holland is actually one of a pair of Native females headed to the Capitol. And in the CD2 race, it came down to a counting of about 8,000 absentee votes to decide the race between Democrat Sochil Torres Small and Republican Yvette Harrell. Now, in the end there, those absentee ballots made the difference for Ms. Torres Small, pushing her to victory. And also giving New Mexico another first, a three-member congressional delegation made up entirely of people of color. So here to talk about this this week is Tom Garrity of the Garrity Group PR, who was also with us on election night. Thank you for coming back two nights later. <laughs> Michael Byrd is here. He's a public health consultant and past president of the, of the American Public Health Association. Laura sanchez Reve is here. She is a lawyer with Cuddy and McCarthy LLP. And we welcome a first-timer to our table, not a first-timer to Albuquerque, certainly, Catherine McGill, founder and director of the New Mexico Black History Organizing Committee. Welcome. Thank you, Gene. God, glad you're here. Now, Tom, we talked a lot about CD2 on the race on, on election night. The Secretary of State, State has declared Ms. Torres Small the winner. A recount, we'll see what happens, if it's inevitable, if it, it doesn't look like it's going to uh, fall in that percentage that has to happen. Let me talk about the district. Was it about the, the, the candidate has the district changed? What happened there? Because that's a big difference from the last few cycles that we've seen. Yeah, you know, I think one of the key narratives, and this is, uh, is one of those narratives, is that what a difference two years makes for the Democratic Party. Uh, you know, two years ago, uh, Democrats were one, walking around questioning life as far right. as what had happened and such. Right. <laughs> uh, now they're carrying that victory flag, and rightly so. Mm -hmm. I think the district for Congressional District 2 has not changed tremendously. I think what happened was there was a tremendous wake-up call two years ago, ah. and as a result, you had an extremely powerful Democratic vote for one, and two, I think you saw also a lot of independents. Uh, who decided to uh, you know, vote a particular way. So right. uh, I don't think necessarily the, the area has changed. I think the perceptions of the importance of vote has changed mm. uh, for the better. Interesting point there. I'll hone in Laura sanchez Reve a little bit more on uh, Doniana County. It was a stronghold for Ms. Torres Small, certainly for a Democrat, uh, you know, Las Cruces, it's, it's just, it worked for her. Is that the point, center of gravity now for that district for Democrats? It, it's just radiating out from Las Cruces. Is there enough now you can carry the district? Well, I think certainly if you look at New Mexico in general, that I-25 corridor mm -hmm. is where it's the stronghold for Democrats in general. I mean, we're talking about Santa Fe, Albuquerque, mm -hmm. Las Cruces, and it used to be that you focused only on those areas. And I think Torres Small did something very smart. She looked beyond that. She was focused on other areas, mm -hmm. uh, Roswell, Deming. I know they did a lot of work in Deming, my hometown. Um, and there's a lot of Democrats in those places. And, you know, I was asked constantly, so, you know, is it that, we, do we have enough Democrats there? There are plenty of Democrats there. The right. problem is that they've always felt like their vote didn't matter. Mm. So what was the point? And so they didn't go out and vote. Right. And I think you're seeing that, that big shift and people feeling like, yes, it does make a big difference. If you look at the last time in CD2, mm -hmm. where a Democrat was elected, 2008 with Harry Teague, who was from Hobbs, um, you know, and, and that was a huge turnout year as well. Mm -hmm. So what's interesting here is that, like a lot of other states, the turnout was was off the charts for a midterm, mm -hmm. um, and and close to where we see it during the presidential. So that made a huge difference. Um, and I think she just had a very solid, uh, you know, very broad base mm -hmm. of support. And she spoke, I think, very well in her ads. Um, she was, I think, she was attractive to a lot of. Uh, independence as well. Right. I'm glad you brought that up. I want to ask you about that, Kathy. It, yeah. it was clear from minute one that she had something. Yeah. Do, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. She had that she little thing that, that, that just like, exactly. Yeah. And that radiates out there, doesn't it? And, it and given what Laura just said about what Democrats are waiting for, yeah. it was there for her. It was. Mm -hmm. And I think she was very appealing um, in terms of her conciliatory message saying that I'm willing to work on both sides of the aisle. And I think that a lot of people are like, we got to do something. We can't keep having this gridlock. And what she said was, uh, we got to get back to some common sense stuff. We recognize our problems, mm -hmm. and now we need to go out and fix them. I know that resonated with me, and I think it resonated with a bunch of other people. Absolutely. Yeah. Michael, how did you see that race from, from afar? We're up here, but were you surprised at the result? Or, you know, because given, you know, we tend to think of a conservative district, conservative Democrats, you know what I mean? And suddenly it just wasn't that way. It's, it seems to me that, uh, you know, there's, there's certainly been a change in, 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 in perspective and in motions na nationally, and and she's a very appealing candidate. She had a good message, mm -hmm. um, and um, seemed to me she rose above the negativity that was out there. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I'm I'm not surprised. I'm you know I, th I think it's uh, 
I think it's going to be there's going to be some interesting times in the in the house. Yeah, no doubt. Let's swing up to CD1. I'll stay with you. We'll get everyone in on this too. Uh, last time you were here, you were predicting Deb was going to pull this out, and it worked out. And she's, uh, which is better. She's not going to be the only Native American. There's going to be others, and that's another woman. That's an, a, a good thing. Yeah. Were you surprised at almost 60 percent? However, she really pulled it in. That that's a heck of a win. I'm not surprised. I think again, the the national sentiment um, is there. Mm -hmm. I think she she had a good message. Um, I think that again, um, you know, I'll just. Uh, you know, it is Native American Heritage Month, so why not? Mm -hmm. And Thanksgiving is looking really good. Love it. Beware of pilgrims. <laughs> uh, no, that's why you're here. I yeah, love it. Be, <laughs> I mean, he but, can say that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I can. No, yes. We've been here for fifteen thousand years, and right. everybody else is an immigrant. That's you right. know, I mean, the bottom line. There you go. Um, but I, I, I think she had a, a sound message and good support, mm -hmm. and um, and Sharice Davis from Kansas, yep. another native, so two native women, and as I said to you before, I think that uh, the house is a mess, and obviously it's going to take some women to to make it right and clean it up, and uh, there's a whole host of folks that are going to to D.C. and um, let's see what they can do. And good point there, exactly right. Uh, Tom, let me go back to you, Janice Arnold Jones. What happened there? What do you think? Wow, uh, so many things. Uh, I think it really hurt her not having a primary contender, as we uh, talked about on election night. Right. Uh, you know, Deb Holland came out of that Democratic primary, and she had the narrative. She had a lot of uh, uh, strong awareness, and she just she was two times around the track before Janice Arnold Jones had her track shoes on. That's right. And uh, so I think Deb just she she ran a great campaign, and uh, and she gets to go to Congress now as a result. That's right. We can't forget about Janice's comment on Fox News about uh, Deb's uh, heritage. Mm -hmm. how, how big a factor was that to you? Um, I think it was a factor in, um, in galvanizing the base for the Democrats. Mm -hmm. um, and anybody who was independent uh, probably saw that as a, you know, it's just, it, she didn't deal with it well. She didn't recover mm. well from it. She sort of seemed to double down after the fact. And I don't know that people, I mean, you, people can, for, voters can forgive a flub, but you have to own it and take responsibility. And, and she didn't do that. And I think that was an issue for her. But beyond that, she also didn't, I mean, she just didn't, she never took off. Um, mm -hmm. There really wasn't much. And I think, you know, a lot of people were surprised that they didn't see her more out there. There wasn't a very aggressive campaign. Right. Those of us who know Janice know sure. that she's she's very assertive. I mean, she's right. been a good campaigner. She's definitely well-spoken. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people were surprised that they didn't see more from her. Mm. Um, we talked Tuesday night, Kathy, about money. And who got what? And right. Republicans did not come up with a whole lot of money in this local race. Right. A lot of these local races. We had Dan Foley here lamenting this, and mm -hmm. uh, some other Republicans. Um, is that is it all about money? Yeah, I, well, you know I think I mean? that a lot of it is about money. Yeah. So if Deb Holland is able to get her message out there uh, to a, a wider uh, base of, of people, and and Janice Arnold Jones wasn't because she didn't have the money, mm -hmm. she couldn't hit back, she couldn't do some of the things that uh, other candidates were able to do, and so I think that really plays. You got to be out there. People got to see you. Mm -hmm. They got to know what your message is, and she just didn't ever develop any traction. Mm -hmm. Although I think she performed well when she had an opportunity to. She made some mistakes. You know, there was right. no reason to question That's right. uh, Deb's heritage. That's right. Yeah. Um, let's kind of broaden this out a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of women that I know are sick of the term, you're the woman. They're sick of it. Yeah. They, you know, been hearing it right. for a lot of years. Right. Heard it from Bill Richardson here. We heard right. from a lot of right. different people. Right. 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 However, mm -hmm. the numbers cannot be denied. They which cannot. Is how, which is how Michael made reference to it, too. Mm -hmm. This Congress is going to look very different, isn't mm -hmm. it? I think it's going to look very different. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Nancy Pelosi's been talking about it. Everybody's talking about all these women going to Congress, you know, who have uh, some some very specific ideas about things that they want to get done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Beyonce said it best, girls rule the world, you know? There you go. Pick up on that if you would. Not the Beyonce part, but the... <laughs> 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 well, you can if you want. I agree that. I, I love agree Beyonce, that. too. Girls no, I mean, I, I, I think it's going to be a very exciting uh, term for, for this Congress and mm -hmm. um, a very exciting time for New Mexico, especially with um, Representative Ben Lujan, right. Ben Ray Lujan being, um, you know, somebody who's being talked about as possible whip, right. majority whip um, right. with Nancy Pelosi, and he's worked very closely with her 
Um, they get along really well, and I know that he's... Um, Go ahead and explain for the folks uh, his r recent sure. role, so well, folks he's, know why he's he been, earned this. He's been the chair of the um, Democratic Congressional um, Campaign Committee, the DCCC, mm -hmm. and he's been, and he's also been um, the chair of the, uh, the Chicano, uh, the Latino Democratic um, Caucus as mm -hmm. well for mm -hmm. some time um, in the past. And so he's been in these leadership roles before, and he's, uh, he's got a very strong relationship with Nancy Pelosi. Mm -hmm. um, she's being talked about, of course, as the, as the speaker, um, sort of taking back, reprising her role as speaker right. that she had before <laughs> when the Democrats were in the majority. Mm -hmm. But now he's also being talked about as a possible uh, majority whip. Right. And so as the whip, he'd be one of the top, he'd be basically the third top um, uh, you know, uh, Democrats in the House, and right. that's big for New Mexico. It's a big leadership position. You know, mm -hmm. he's been in this leadership role yep. with the D-Trib now um, for this last term. He had amazing, uh, you know, he, he is just such a brilliant person, in my opinion. I've known him for many years mm -hmm. since we were both young Democrats, and just to watch him grow in these positions, um, mm -hmm. back when he was at the PRC and the, and the command that he had of the technical issues yeah, there right. and right. the work that he's done in Congress, but now in these leadership positions, he really had a good command of all of these different races, and he right. knew very specifically and I was fortunate enough to hear from him about some of those specific races mm -hmm. and he was very optimistic and could talk very fluently about what was happening in every one of these races and mm -hmm. I think it shows that he did a great job and that really elevates him into a leadership position and it's good for New Mexico. He earned it and it is good for New Mexico no question about it. Let's talk about the governor's race we'll finish up the segment with this. Tom start with you on this uh, pretty big margin at the end there for uh, Michelle Lujan Grisham. Yeah it was actually the same exact margin uh, as we saw in 2000. 14 between Susanna Martinez and Gary King. How interesting. And uh, that yeah. was called a mandate. So right. I, I think she's earned that and uh, mm. I, I hope she does well. Agreed. Is that a mandate? Is that a big enough? She can just, you know, she is the Democrat in this state right now, right? It's her it's, state right now. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good to me. Debate is, uh, 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 mandate is in the ear of the beholder. Right. Right. He's, right. You know. Absolutely. It's interesting that you do this when you <laughs> say that. <That's> right. <laughs> <laughs> was that Freudian? Right, exactly. <laughs> Good catch there. Well, and there is a, you know, in terms of talking with Dan in one of the previous sessions, we talked about, you know, is there a blue wave? Well, in New Mexico, there definitely was. Mm -hmm. And you see it reflected in the election. Right, right. Jeff Bingaman heading I'll, up here transition. Isn't I think that that's fantastic. Yeah. I think everybody universally loves Jeff and, and that he's going to do a good job and he's he's going to really set the tone for how these next few years are going to go. Right. So I think good call. Is that a, a, a t speaking of the tone, is that a, a signal to other Democrats like a flare in the sky saying we're here. Mm -hmm. you know, we, got, we have a, a previous generation, we have a current generation, mm -hmm. it's a Democrats all across the board, you know. I think it is. Mm -hmm. I think that, it, you know, it is, you know, let's do this right because right. with that mandate comes tremendous responsibility. Uh, yes. So, you know, I think that, that Jeff's going to be able to, to help people understand the responsibility that comes with the mandate. Mm -hmm. Jeff Bingaman, good oh, choice. Great yeah. choice. It yeah. was, it's great to see him back. Uh, obviously, he never left New Mexico, I but see. to have him back <laughs> in this particular role, I think... You know, he, he's always been known as a, as a, you know, someone who crosses the aisle. And I think as an independent, you look at him and you go, you know what? This is going to, this is a good news because it's not somebody who's a partisan, you know, uh, party person. Right, exactly right. Right, mm -hmm. and he has such a long legacy of solid, I mean, he's a statesman. Yes. He's just, he, good way he, to put his it. staff people um, were really professional, high level folks. And he's mm -hmm. got just a long history of, of selecting very, very good staff people as well. So I think because of that, that means, I mean, it's, it's going to make a huge difference for Michelle. You know, normally in these transition positions, you look at former governors. Um, and obviously, um, uh, uh, Jerry Apodaca wasn't going to make that list. Um, <laughs> 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 but, uh, but, you know, I, I think of the people that she could have uh, tapped for this. Jeff Bingaman is just such a, you know, he's got such a great reputation. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it really signals that she's serious about getting well-qualified people it's not just a patronage thing. It's about making sure you're fitting people with good qualifications into the right position. Good way to put it. That's right. all the time we have for that, right, for that particular topic. When we come back to the line, we'll take a look at the legislative and judicial races, as well as the constitutional amendments.